Oh, hey, my name's Hunter. I'll be teaching you about the bass today. For starters, I'm going to show how we carry the bass when it's in its case and outside of its case, and what are the best ways to adjust the bass to fit your playing. So when we start with carrying the bass, we always want to carry it in its case whenever we're going from location to location. And when we're carrying it, we'll carry it right on the little edge right here so we're not pulling any of the, any of the string. After we have our bass in our possession, we're going to just unzip the case and then we're going to slide the bass off, making sure that we have the bass in a very firm grasp the entire time. When the bass is finally unpacked and we're heading to our spot in our rehearsals, we always want to carry the bass by this little piece right here. This is called the bout of the bass. And the reason we carry it there is because we don't want to put any extra stress on the strings or the bridge itself because then that, that will cause wear and tear and could actually damage the instrument itself. Whenever you're in an ensemble rehearsal, you always make sure that you are, you are wrapping around the bass. You're able to hug the bass, you're able to access all parts of the bass. If by any chance in a rehearsal setting we need to reach for something, say a pencil or a bow or rosin, what we'll do is we'll just grab the bass right here because it's the most stable point where we can grab it. As you can see, I'm not squeezing too hard. I'm just keeping it nice and firm. That way I don't let the instrument go and let anything bad happen to it. Before we get into any fundamentals about playing the actual instrument itself, we should probably learn the parts of the instrument. So this little part right down here is going to be called the bout. Up here, these are called the shoulders of the bass. Up here, this little thing is called the scroll, and these are our tuning pegs. Each tuning peg correlates to a different string, and with each of these strings, we can either lower the pitch or raise the pitch. The neck of the bass, and that's this little region right here. The neck of the bass is what attaches the, bo the body and the shoulders to the scroll, so we can tune it. As we go further down, we have the bridge, and the bridge is a very crucial part of the bass. We always want to make sure it's safe and sound, but playing closer to the bridge or further away to the bridge actually can depict how our sound is produced. Gently, I'm going to put the bass down now, and I'll have the bass lie on the two upper bout and the lower bout. This way, it's not laying on any of the sides of the strings or the bridge or in the back, and it's in no danger of tipping over. The next important aspect of how we play a classical double bass is we want to make sure that we have a bow. So with bows, we always want to make sure that when we're done with our rehearsal setting, we always loosen it. There's a nice little arch in, in this bow right here, and if we were to keep it tightened all the time, then the bow would actually lose its curvature and then it would alter the sound. So then when we tighten the bow, we don't want to tighten it too hard because then we'll actually, script the, we'll actually strip the screw that's actually right inside of here. So we'll just take this little end piece and we'll tighten it just to where it's bouncy enough where if we play it on a string we can get a nice sound but not where it's loose enough where the bow hairs will actually touch the bridge of the bow itself. Another best friend to the bow is called rosin and rosin is a tacky substance that helps the horse hairs on the bow string and it actually makes it tacky so they can actually pull the metal strings to make a very nice sound. Because the bass is such a big instrument and we have such long strings our rosin tends to be more tacky, and because it is more tacky, we always want to ensure that when we're putting the rosin on our bow, we're putting a light amount of pressure, but we're also going in the same direction. We never want to go in opposing directions, because if we do, we're at risk of breaking the bow hairs. If you ever do break a bow hair, do not rip it off either, like cut it off, that way we don't have any risk of pulling out any more bow hairs, because if we look closely, they're all intertwined in this little metal slab right here. Now that the bow is tightened and rosin, we can talk about holding the bow. So actually, the bass is cool because we have two different types of bow holds. So this is, a, is unfortunately just a German bow, but I want to show you the French grip and the German grip. So for the French grip, usually there's going to be a, a little fork right here, and we're going to place our thumb right there, and we're going to just let our fingers drape over, and actually put our pinky on a little bit, so that way we have some resistance. When playing with French grip, we always want to make sure that we have a very loose wrist, and because we're going to be ending, end up moving our hands like this on the instrument. The bow that I have in my presence today is actually called a German bow. German bows are a little different. They have more curvature and there's more space down here. And the way that we hold the German bow is I like to teach it is we give a little okay, and we'll slide the little end piece where we, we're tightening right through our fingers. We'll break that okay, and we'll put our, our thumb and our pointer finger grabbing right here. Our pinky will go right underneath, and then we have our middle and ring finger right here, and we're going to just let them sit right in here with a nice curved hand shape. When playing the bass, we have multiple ways of producing a sound. Let's start with the bow. The different locations where we bow on the bass will help depict our sound. A lot of the times, we like to stay in this general vicinity. This We call this the lane. We want to stay in our lane when we're playing. So when we play... <laughs> stays in that one area. But we can also, for multiple effects, 
um, in particular pieces of music, we can always do things lightly. So when we play up above the fingerboard, this is called soltasto. And soltasto, you're going to play above the fingerboard, um, not too high because we don't want where our fingers go to have the oils ruin the bow hair, but this will make a nice light sound. Normal. Soltasto. And then we also can play sol ponticello, which is going to be right above the bridge. And this is used for a lot of harsher sounds when we'll actually make a, it'll, you'll get a lot of like screeching noises. And that's exactly what you want when you play sol ponticello. One more thing with the bow is sometimes in music, there's going to be a little marking called coleño. Coleño means you're going to take the bow and instead of playing on the hair side of the bow, you're going to flip it over and you're going to play on the other side. And this will create a nice bouncy feel. Very articulate. And so now without the bow, what we can actually do is we can use our fingers to play. And this is called pizzicato. So when we pizzicato, depending on the style, if it's a jazz style, we tend to want to pizz a little bit more in this vicinity. That way we can produce a nice aromatic sound. The higher up we pitch, the softer it's going to be. Just like when you're using our bow, instead of staying in our lane down here, moving closer to the fingerboard, we're going to be quieter. So the same thing's going to happen to the pitch. So here's a low pitch. And then sometimes here's a high pitch. There's not a huge difference, but there is some kind of contrast. When we're pitching, we also want to think about there's different kinds of pitching. So we have a nice solid pitch, or we'll have things known as Barotok pitzes, where we actually are going to snap the string against the fingerboard to make a nice crunchy sound. When we are also uh, playing with other styles of bass, we can use jazz. And here's a little excerpt of how we play jazz bass, just on a simple walking bass line. Here's a little excerpt in the bass called The Elephant. I know that was a lot of information, but that's just an introduction to the wonderful world of the double bass.